Hi guys, today I'm going to do a video talking about what types of cameras I use when I'm out filming on the water or on the ice or at home. I've had a lot of questions from my viewers about which equipment I'm using to capture my fishing experiences when I'm out there and I wanted to go over them with you. So originally when I first started my YouTube channel I uh, had a limited amount of money to get started. So I started with these uh, Kodak Pix Pro SP1s. They're kind of a blocky action camera. They are waterproof. Um, and I'm not really submersing these underwater. I just wanted something I could have out in the rain that was tough and resilient uh, to, to water and dust. And uh, they did a really good job for me. They retail for only about 120 bucks. They mount with standard tripod mounts here. But what I liked about them is they filmed in 1080 at, uh, so that was high def, um, and they film at 30 frames per second, which is good enough for most of what I'm doing. But what I really liked about them most of all uh, was the color quality is really good on these and they have a very long battery life. So I could record for two hours um, on an average battery charge and the batteries are inexpensive. So with just a few batteries, um, I was able to film for most of the day. And one of the things that's critical for me is having a camera that can run all day and I can capture uh, the full catch on the camera um, from start to finish. Uh, so it's a, a better experience for you. So it's a really good uh, introductory camera. The sound's not bad. Um, it definitely does get blown out during wind though. So uh, that was one of the biggest challenges with the Kodak SP1. But for 120 bucks, it's a great little camera um, that really delivers. Okay, the next camera that I've been using is this little GoPro Hero Session 5. They don't even make the Hero Session 5. You can still find refurbs of this little cube camera out there on the market for anywhere from 80 to 150 bucks. Uh, but there's a new camera company out there called RunCam, which makes a, a very similar cube camera that actually delivers better sound and video quality uh, for about 100 bucks. I really like this little camera. I use it a lot um, for those short, quick shots uh, when I'm either in the kayak or on the ice. Um, I'll put this on an extendable uh, handle so I can put it down underneath the water for those slow-mo uh, release shots, underwater release shots, or through the ice shots. It films in 1080. Um, I can shoot at 30 or 60 frames per second. I generally keep this one at 60 frames per second for that slow-mo release. So when you let the fish out of your hand, you get that nice smooth graduation as it moves away. Uh, it doesn't have a very long battery life, but just because um, it is really small, compact and durable, I really like it. I'm not gonna get more than 40 minutes runtime um, on a single charge on it, which is all I really need. It's just, just a, a, a little camera that I use for B-roll or very quick narration. Uh, the audio quality on it isn't superb, but generally um, if I'm talking to this, uh, into this camera, I'm talking really tight to my face and I tend to get good audio quality anyways. Uh, so that's the other camera I use. Now I don't really use the SP1s anymore other than for B-roll footage. So I might put them on the back of the kayak or down close to the ice fishing hole just to capture some B-roll. Now my primary filming camera is this DJI Osmo Action Cam. Um, there's a lot of reasons why I decided to go with this cam versus uh, a GoPro. And one of the main reasons is, is I can flip the screen. It's a touch screen on the back. But I can also look on the front screen, it has a little LCD screen here. I can see what I'm filming. Um, and so if I'm blogging um, or talking to the camera or setting up the shot on the kayak, I can look um, without having to see the back of the camera. I can see exactly what I'm filming and that's a big difference for me. Additionally, what's really nice about this camera is um, I have a ton of uh, options in terms of filming. Um, I can film in 4K, which I almost never do because 99.9% .9 of you are consuming my YouTube videos either on a desktop computer or mostly you're consuming them on your smartphones or tablets. And 4K and 1080, you're not gonna see a ton of difference there unless you're watching it on a big screen. And most of you are not watching me on a big screen. 
Um, so I always uh, tend to shoot in 1080 or 720 HD for that reason. Also, it makes the file sizes a lot more manageable. But what I really like about this camera, besides the front screen, which was one of the deal breakers for me, is uh, I bought this external cage, and I will put links to all these products below. I bought this external cage for this and this adapter, which plugs into the side of the unit here. And what that adapter allows me to do is now I can do a couple things. When I'm out running um, and filming out on the boat or my kayak or on the ice, I can take an external power source, an external power, power pack like this one, this lithium one, and I can plug in and while the camera's running, I can also be charging it. And with this uh, anchor battery pack here, I can run this thing for about uh, 32 hours straight of filming uninterrupted. Additionally, um, it has a port here for an external microphone and I can plug that into here and it has a hot seat on the top, uh, a shoe. Uh, so I can plug that in. Oops, got that backwards. And so I can just plug that into the top there, secure that, and then prop that up using the wire clips here on the back of that seat. I can screw that into place. Oops, sorry. Okay, and now I have, this is up and out of the way. This is a directional microphone. Um, I can take off this and that will give me really good audio quality if I'm shooting from the front of the kayak back towards me. And if it's windy, I can put this over the top and that keeps that wind noise down, but it doesn't really suppress the quality of the sound. The DJI Osmo has built-in software that helps edit out uh, wind noise as well. And it does a really good job of that, even minus an external microphone. So even, I don't really need this unless I'm filming somewhere where I'm expecting to have wind. Additionally, uh, Rode, who makes this little microphone, also makes a little external microphone, which I have on the top of the camera that I'm running right now, that's wireless. And so I can also run this, which allows me to get up and walk away from the camera and still have good audio quality the whole time because it's transmitting. And that makes a big difference. Okay. So that's the DJI Osmo. It's, you know, there's a bunch of other features on here, but for the bulk of the type of filming I do, I'm just shooting in 1080, 60 frames per second. It has really good audio quality. It has amazing image stabilization. Um, I mean, it just does a fantastic job of uh, stabilizing the video for me when I'm out on the kayak and I'm rocking in the waves. You can barely notice it at all. Um, also, if I have it mounted um, on my body, it helps to stabilize that shot as well. Um, now, the DJI Osmo does retail for about 370 bucks, so it's quite a step up. Um, they do have really good warranty programs that you can purchase for an additional amount. Um, that way, if you do break or lose your camera, you can replace it for a reduced cost. Another thing that's nice about it is it has a replaceable lens here on the front. So if you scratch or break that lens, you can spend just a few bucks and screw a new lens in place. Um, I've actually been impressed with how well the touchscreen works even when my fingers are wet. One of the things I've really struggled with when filming with touchscreen cameras is uh, my hands get wet all the time because I'm fishing. Um, it's hard to use the touchscreen. This one does a pretty good job, so I've been really happy with it. Without the battery pack, it's got a relatively short life, 45 minutes max, and the, the battery's toast for the day. Okay, and then there's another camera that uh, I use um, not every day, but that is my Go Fish Cam. This is an underwater fishing uh, inline fishing camera, so uh, this allows me to get those underwater strike uh, videos. I used to run Waterwolf. I actually lost two Waterwolves due to failure in their um, harness that the camera attaches to. There's really no risk of that with the GoFish cam. It's all uh, welded in here and tied in here. There's no way I'm gonna lose this. And what's nice about this one is my old Waterwolf had only shot in seven, um, 720 and it wasn't high def. Um, this is shoots in 1080 up to 60 frames per second, which I love because one of the things that I really like to do is sometimes stop and grab a still frame out of there for um, sharing photos or also for making um, 
thumbnails for my videos and this allows me to capture that uh, those still shots a lot better with 60 frames per second um, it also has a built-in light so if I'm running at depths where there's not a lot of light available I can turn on a green light which shines back on the lure so I can get a little bit better illumination on the fish and it even even is Wi-Fi capable above water um, so I can instantly review a video while I'm out in the field I shoot this at 1080 60 frames per second and right now I'm getting about 45 minutes of film time out of it um, I get substantially more if I back that off to 30 frames per second or even 720 HD. Um, but I'm really going for quality on this. Um, and so oftentimes I'll take this out, run it, and when it's run down, I can uh, charge it off of an external power pack while I'm out there for a few more minutes and get some additional film time on it. These retail for about 150 bucks. Um, and I'm really looking forward to using this more in the coming year. Okay, and this is the Panasonic uh, DMC FC 2500. This is the camera I primarily use for vlogging at home or vlo uh, vlogging out on the ice and capturing really good high quality co uh, content, um, especially when I'm trying to get really good uh, video B-roll of like wildlife from a distance and things like that. I'll carry this in the kayak with me. It has an equivalent of a 480 millimeter lens, um, so that's almost 20 times optical zoom. It has some of the best image stabilization on the market out there for a super camera. So this isn't an SLR. I didn't want to get an SLR because I didn't want to have to be worrying about changing lenses out there. I wanted some something compact that I could use for close-up video and also for distant video. And this does it at a reasonable cost. Um, it has a full one-inch sensor, so it has the same sensor size as standard SLRs. And it really delivers a very good video quality for me. And it's been a really important... Um, addition to uh, the variety of cameras I have for capturing um, my experience out in the water. One of the things that I really f challenges me when I'm out there filming is to try and give people context, kind of make them, bring them into the place um, where I'm fishing. And a big part of that for me is when I go out is, you know, listening to all the birds and seeing all the wildlife all around me. Um, that is such a huge part of the experience for me when I'm out filming. So having this camera has helped me bring that to you. Okay, next I just want to briefly go through some of the different uh, camera mounts that I use when I'm filming on land, on the ice, or out in my kayak. Uh, so a critical component to filming on land or on the ice uh, are a variety of, of tripods in different sizes. I'm going to use at least two or three of these at any one time so I have a bunch of different angles going on my shots. You know, if I want to get up close shots on the ice right near the hole, I might have my little tripod mounted right there. I might be using a bigger one if I'm filming the, uh, say I'm filming my fish finder so you guys can see what I'm seeing while I'm out there. So it's good to have uh, several of those on hand. I've also got um, one of these tough claws with a camera mount on it from Ram Mounts. Um, so I can literally stick this on any of the equipment that I'm using and create an instant camera mount or I can even put it on a tree branch or whatever I need to while I'm out there. Um, I also use a couple different styles of selfie sticks. So I'll have one that floats like this one here. So if I drop it overboard, um, I don't have to worry about losing my camera. And I use this uh, little selfie stick here quite a bit for when I'm filming um, in my kayak um, or on the ice. I put the, the Hero Session on here, that small camera. And that lets me plunk this under the water and get that release shot underneath the kayak or get, uh, you know, shots of the pedal drive going and things like that or I can do this through the ice and also get some really nice videos of, of release to underwater so that's really handy and then if I'm doing any sort of first person filming um, originally I started with chest mounts and head mounts and I found that I didn't like those for head mounts one thing is I tend to look around a lot and so I'm just not always focusing on what the angler wants to see or what the viewer wants to see um, so I don't really wear head mounts and chest mounts I'm tended to get a lot of blocked uh, of shots because you know I'm fishing right here, everything's up in the front, everything's happening right here, the reel blocks the view. So I went to this shoulder strap mount, which this is one by Stuntman, this one actually wraps around your entire body, and it's extremely stable. 
and I can put a camera here and I can change the angle of how I film that. And I also have one um, also made by the same company, Stuntman on Amazon, uh, that this one will attach uh, using straps to either my PFD or backpack and will also give me that same uh, ability to get that really great shoulder shot, which really opens up the shot. And when you're fishing, you tend to get that shoulder shot in there anyways all the time because your shoulder tends to be facing where you're fishing. So those are just some of the mounts I'll be using and I'll put links to all of these below. Now let's go see what I use to film out on my kayak. Okay, let's just take a quick look at what I'm using to uh, mount cameras on my kayak. So this is my Old Town Topwater 120. Sometimes I do a bow mount shot using that tough claw. So I can, I can actually attach this anywhere and move it. So I can take that off or attach that. This is a nice attachment point on that handle. And then using that RAM ball mount system, I can adjust uh, the camera accordingly how I need it. But probably the main and most important uh, camera mounting system I use is Ram Mount's Tough Pull system. Um, so this is that massive camera boom here. I think this is a 40 inch camera boom or 48 inch camera boom. I've got uh, a USB power cord wrapped all the way down. Then I can store a external battery pack down here so I can put a large SD card in that camera and that will allow me to film all day and I don't have to worry about changing out batteries or SD cards. And what's really nice about this is there's a lot of adjustability in terms of angle. And then I can adjust the tension with how easy that this camera boom turns. I can tighten and loosen things up so it'll turn easier or I can tighten this up the other way. And now it turns a lot more difficult. So it stabilizes that shot, has a nice dual spline base here. Uh, that really adds uh, two points of contact on the gear track, so it's very stable. And then the camera stabilization um, software can do the rest for me. Um, so those are really nice, and they actually have multiple points here. You can tie in um, tethers if you want to tie something to the camera. So if it comes off for some reason, you won't lose it. Um, so that's their bigger camera boom right there from Ram Mount. And then I use a smaller one. Back here on the back on a gear track, I've mounted on the rear of the cam uh, kayak that allows me to get that sort of uh, shot from behind so I can get, you know, fish coming up against the side of the kayak as I net them. Um, it just gives a more holistic experience when I'm looking out that way. So that's all I really use other than some handheld mounts as well. Um, is primarily these tough poles from Ram Mounts. And these things are pretty tough. I beat them up quite a bit, dragging them through the forest and whatnot. Um, if you want to buy any of the Ram Mount stuff, I'm going to put a link. If you put the discount code THICKS, H-I-C-K-S, 20, you'll get a 10% discount on all your purchases at rammounts.com. Um, and I will put links to all these products below. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. Put them in the comments below. Um, be sure and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or it helped you out. And I'll see you next time, all right? Uh, hopefully I'll be out on the water in a few weeks. I'm not really sure right now our recreational fisheries are closed uh, in response to COVID-19. So see you guys next time. Bye.